Many of you watching this have normal vision. Oh sure, you might have to find your reading glasses if you want to read a good book, and you might have to make sure that there's enough light around to see it. But for the most part, many of you see rather well. For others, seeing things clearly isn't quite so easy. For example, how do people with less than perfect vision use the web? What kinds of technology is available? And what can web designers do to make their pages easier to use by people who don't see quite so clearly? Vision loss can take many forms, and it can be mild or quite extreme. For example, some people have hypersensitivity to glare, while others may be colorblind. Some may see an entire image, but it might be either blurred or clouded, while others might see the center of the image, often referred to as tunnel vision, and others still might see the edges of the image, often called peripheral vision. Hello, my name is Neil Ewers, and I work for the Trace Research and Development Center, which is a part of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I too happen to have a vision condition. I am totally blind. I have my friend John Clad here today. I've asked him to come and talk to us about his specific vision condition and how he uses technology to access the web. Hi John, it's good to have you. Hi Neil, thank you for having me. Can you begin by telling us a little bit about who you are and how you do use technology to access the web? Sure. I'm a graduate student here at UW. I'm also employed by the university. I have a form of macular degeneration that has taken uh, a good part of my central vision. And although my visual acuity is below 2200, I'm usually able to use most printed material, such as web pages, uh, as long as they're blown up by a power of four. I can show you briefly how I uh, navigate not only computer technology, but specifically the web. I use a, a screen enlargement program called ZoomText, and as you can see, uh, it enlarges everything on the screen. It makes everything, all of the print, nice and big and easy to read. And it's one of the features that I like about Zoom Text is it comes with a couple different options. One of the problems with having this screen so large is that only a portion of the screen actually fits on to my monitor at one time. Ooh. So it's very easy to um, kind of become disoriented or, or lose track of where I am. John, the reason I said ooh was the fact that I realized that when you zoom as highly as you can zoom, you must only be able to read one or two or three words at a time. And that's kind of like what happens to me when I use my screen reader, which speaks, and therefore I only hear one word at a time. So I would guess that if you had vision in low enough to have to have that kind of magnification, it'd be really hard to figure out what was on the screen. It, it can become very difficult, especially as the magnification goes up. I can adjust the magnification so that um, essentially one word or just two numbers are fitting on the screen. And in those situations, it becomes uh, very disorienting. One of the ways to get around that problem is to simply switch the function of the magnification. This option is actually like a, a handheld magnifier where only the portion under the magnifying box actually becomes magnified. With this option, I can actually see the entire uh, document that I'm working on or the entire web page that I'm working with, but at the same time I can magnify the, the pieces that I really need to see. On this page, while I can't see any of the exact text, I can tell that there's a column of information on the left, there appears to be a column of more detailed information on the right, and up in the right hand corner it looks like there's something, could possibly be links. I'm looking for pieces of, inf of information that give me context to what the page is all about. I'm also looking for pieces of, of information that match the context of the task I'm trying to uh, complete. John, can you give us an example? Sure. Uh, a couple months ago I was doing a research project on uh, using human subjects in research, and this particular page is one that I came to quite often. There are symbols next to each of these links, and each of these symbols represent a different issue in human subjects research. And what I found is, after coming to the page a number of times, I no longer had to start to differentiate between 
the headings and the descriptions of the headings and the various links, all I needed to do was find the appropriate symbol and click on the link and I could access the page that I wanted. Uh, this was a, a perfect example of uh, how context can actually guide my task and can actually facilitate um, the work that I'm doing. John, do you use color at all to figure out how to get around a page? Yeah, actually, uh, color is a pretty important element of the page. On the UW homepage, up in the right-hand corner, there's a list of links, and the top row of links is in red, and the row of links right below that is in orange. It's easy to distinguish between these links. I don't necessarily confuse them as one. Uh, the screen magnifier obviously enlarges the text, but it doesn't necessarily prevent me from uh, making simple mistakes. I'm, not, I'm still not reading it real clearly, and this simple use of color creates a distinction that, uh, that's very helpful. John, you can see color, but there are a number of people who are colorblind. And if, for example, you went to a page that had stocks, and the green ones were going up and the red ones were going down, you'd be lost. Yeah, I, I certainly would. Uh, and you're right, I can distinguish the colors, and that's a big help for me. For those people who are colorblind, I know that some magnification software comes with um, s different settings that try to accommodate that. They'll filter in certain colors or filter out certain colors. Uh, you can change the background setting. Um, so there are some things that, that can be done. What about spacing, John? Does the spacing of text and other elements on a page help? Yeah, it really does. Uh, because of the way the magnification software works, a little extra spacing between lines and a little extra spacing between links actually helps me quite a bit. When pages become too cluttered and there's too much information packed into a small area, uh, it actually becomes fairly confusing to try to figure out what the text is saying and, and follow where I am on a page. And honestly, sometimes it becomes a little overwhelming. This UW homepage actually contains a great deal of information. There's an awful lot of uh, resources and links to other pages, but as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of space. There's a lot of space in between the lines. The print is nice and big, even without the magnification software. Um, things certainly do not look cluttered, um, and, and because of that, I find it very easy to use. Do you ever use shapes like blocks of text or boxes or anything like that to help get around? Certainly. Uh, shapes are uh, similar to color and, and space in that they help me understand what's on the page. Um, blocks of text, search bars positioned somewhere in the, uh, in the page give me clues as to um, where to find particular things on, on the web page. And I think that um, web designers with you know, some careful thought about how they're using color, shape, and space really help people navigate uh, their task. I know that your magnification software can speak as well as magnify, and it would seem to me that if you were losing a lot of your vision, being able to hear something and see it at the same time would be really helpful. Can you show us how that works? Sure. The magnification software that I use has something called a doc reader, and it will read all of the text on the page, and at the same time it will put the text on a ticker at the top of the page, so you get a chance to hear it as well as see it. Play button. The University of Wisconsin Madison. I'll search my Oak with links, timetable, directories, employment, help, news, and events, events, calendar, Oak Madison to require. Right. One of the added benefits of having the text go through the ticker is that all of the text becomes standardized. So if um, the page has text that's in a lot of different fonts or different sizes, or if it's in red and difficult to read, uh, as it goes through the ticker, it all becomes one size, it becomes a, a style of font that's very easy to read, and it's white text on a black background. That would seem to be awful easy for lots of people with different conditions like color blindness to use. Can you use that without having it speak? Yeah, yeah, and that's actually the way I usually use it. You mentioned font, John, and I know that font size and font family are really important and should be things that web developers keep in mind. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And uh, font color and background are also important to me. Well, John, I'd have to say that you've certainly helped me, a person who is totally blind, understand a lot more about what it's like for you to navigate the web. And if you can show me, a totally blind person, 
how it is, then you've obviously spoken to a lot of other people as well. I really appreciate your being here. Thank you for having me. I had a good time.